Today we welcome an artist whose talents have landed him on labels like This Never Happened, Ein Musica, Sudbeat, Sakura, Zero Three, Songspire and more. I'm proud to welcome onto the channel, Humanal. After first discovering Humanal through his track Fortune Flute on Sakura last year, I went through his back catalogue and was consistently impressed by his work. Almost every single track I listened to all the way back into 2014 with his Prophecies EP is both technically interesting and connects with me musically. Today Humanal joins Basic Waves to give an in-depth look into his creation process while breaking down a track he produced while exploring our sounds. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Humanal. Hey guys, this is Humano here, and today I'll be breaking down a new track that I made uh, called Wheels, especially for Basic Waves, having used a lot of their sounds in my recent track. So let's dive right in. Uh, so let's first show you the main melodies that I started with. So the main melody uh, is an ARP that I created uh, using Cthulhu. I will show you that in a bit, but let's listen to it first. consists of two separate melodies one you have here um, in the first part um, and one that evolves later in uh, in the break and at the climax or already here actually Then at the the drop or the climax, uh, this is what it sounds like. So very trancy. Uh, I wanted to make something trancy with a lot of pace and power. Um, uh, so I've added also a lot of like powerful drums, but we'll get to that later. Let's first show you how I came up with this melody. Uh, I came up with this melody um, by using Cthulhu. I used it a lot, this a lot actually, uh, this this MIDI device um, for you know starting a project, starting coming up with a nice melody. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it's an uh, it's a MIDI generator by X4 Records. Uh, I, I believe it was uh, created by Steve Duda. Uh, and he added uh, all of the chord progressions of, uh, or, or all of the chords from, I think, uh, all of Bach's uh, <laughs> uh, most famous uh, compositions. Um, and there are a lot of nice chords in there that can really get you started. And you can combine it with uh, the ARP generator as well to instantly make ARPs out of those, um, out of those chord progressions. <laughs> So let's show you how I came up with the first melody by using Cthulhu. Uh, okay. So as you can hear, it's a, it's a little bit different. It sounds more uh, sweet. So I use Cthulhu using the three steps ARP um, on the third, the fifth, and the seventh. And then it creates uh, these nice chord progressions based on the MIDI input that I've put in here. And you end up with uh, with this end result. 
Um, we, I can show you also how the MIDI is then generated here. So that was a starting point. I really liked that melody. Um, and then I, I, but I found the melody a little bit too sweet. Um, so I changed it up a little bit, uh, also changing the key. And eventually I tweaked it a little bit and came up with uh, this result. And a more basic form of the melody is uh, earlier in the song, which sounds like this. So that's basically... Um, uh, th that was the start of the project. A uh, start of for me a sort of starting point, saying, okay, this is a really nice melody. Let's build some uh, build around it. Um, I've used for this uh, uh, for this uh, melody. I've used um, let me see the BW Visions to plug Airborne from uh, the from the ba Basic Waves presets that I got, which I thought was really nice and analog soundy. Um, and I have one uh, uh, arp that goes, you know, that plays with the cutoff, goes open and, and closes up. And I have one more filter that just stays the same pretty much the whole song to fill up the mids. Like this. And then I also have some layers here and there to, I think here this is uh, one octave higher. For a little bit of change further up in the song. Um, and then I also uh, added a layer of um, a simple, or the, the main melody which I heard in the ARP and used, let me see. BW Visions 2, Lead Butterfly, also from the Basic Waves presets, um, which adds a little bit of depth to it. It's it's a it's a little bit in between a lead and a and a and a pad, I think. When it opens up, and it emphasizes the melody uh, in the ARP as well. So yeah, that was uh, that's how I, I got started with this project. It's just that basic melody, um, and then uh, what I did, I started working on the bass line. So let's pull that in. Oh, maybe going back to the lead. By the way. Uh, what I've used on those um, on the ARPs uh, is a little bit of processing. I used the RC20 uh, retro color for a little bit of noise and wobble distortion, give it a little bit more of an analog feel. Um, and also this uh, <clears throat> delay plugin Replica XT from Native Instruments, which is really nice. Uh, let me see. Without it, it sounds like this. And with it, it sounds like 
this. And of course, uh, the, LF the LFO tool for some uh, for some docking, some side chain, and simple EQ. Nothing, uh, nothing that special going on there. Um, and the same uh, effects have been used on other lead sounds as well. All right, let's go to the bass. Um, so what I always have in my standard Ableton template is uh, two bases, one base, uh, a sub bass basically, a simple sub bass uh, generated uh, through Massive and a mid bass as well. And I always test uh, different patterns um, before I, um, uh, I always test different patterns to see which pattern uh, fits best with the ARP. Um, so I, for example, I can show you. This is already the melody, but... This can be quite helpful if you're if you're just searching for the right sort of pattern. I can really recommend having this in your Ableton template so you can get started. Even though it might not be the sound eventually that you'll end up with, you can really test different uh, the different sort of pace of the track and see where you want to go with it. Um, so that's a nice tip. Um, but I ended up with uh, this melody, this bass line. Let me see, where is it? Yeah. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to have a little bit more pace in this track, so that's uh, that's why it, uh, it repeats itself quite a lot of times, uh, rather than just have one sort of legato bass. Um, and together with the main melody, it sounds like this. Uh, we'll get to that later. So you have the, the mid bass, this one, which is uh, a simple um, sound I created using uh, Massive. Um, I really like this synth for like basic sounds, uh, especially uh, for bass sounds, um, with a little bit of processing, with an OTT compressor on it, um, compressing a little bit on the depth on 20%. Uh, again, RC20. I think we can keep the noise off here, actually. Um, and the LFO tool as well. Um, so fairly simple bass, bass line sound, uh, but it's there to, um, to support the main melody and not necessarily take the stage. And then we have the bass low, uh, so the, the sub bass basically, which is, I think it's sort of the same sound, but with no reverb on it. W yeah, without any, I think, reverb on it. And just really for that sub, uh, sub bass to uh, support the track with quite a heavy sidechain compression because in the really low sub bass you really want to make sure the the kick and the bass uh they work together nicely and it leaves an, the bass leaves enough room for the kick to cut through um then there's also a, a bass line in the break which is a little bit different than the normal the normal instead of let me see so here it goes from from f to d sharp and here it goes from 
F to G sharp actually, and then later to A sharp, which is a little bit different, uh, which we'll hear later, but it's, it's really nice to have a little bit of bass. I like to have that in my tracks, have a little bit of bass changes um, in, the, in the breaks for, the, for extra tension. And then on top of that, I have a bass bass saw step, uh, which just creates uh, more energy on the um, on the on the first beat, basically. Uh, together, it sounds like this. It will make more sense together with all of the other elements, but. Going back to just those uh, bass sounds, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's fairly simple. One thing I haven't mentioned is that I've, on the sub bass, I've kept the, the sub mono and uh, a little bit of limiting as well to make sure um, that the volume is equally uh, loud on all the different bass lines because there's a lot of difference in here. So, um, yeah. Um, and the bass uh, step or saw bass, whatever you want to call it, is just a. Is this sound BWA lead Sharon? I think I modified it a little bit with a simple EQ. Uh, this I'm dimension expander, which is really nice, which fills the stereo field a little bit more. I can show you how it sounds without. So without it's this. <laughs> with it's this it's really nice it adds much more energy when when the when everything kicks in um it's a little bit of a difference but in the end those all those little differences on multiple channels make a huge difference in the end um so yeah that's the bass sound um Let me see. Let's add some drums. Uh, let's. Uh... All right. Okay. So, like I said, I wanted to make a sort of a trancy track with a lot of pace. So, um, in the drums, you'll hear uh, you'll you'll hear that pace as well. Um, altogether, it sounds like this. A little bit further down the road. Fairly straightforward um, with uh, a four to the floor kick. Uh, yeah, let's just start there. But not just four to the floor, but at the end of every every bar, uh, a second kick. I like that. I have that in a lot of my tracks for extra groove. Because otherwise, it sounds like this. And yeah, it just gives it a little bit more grooviness to the whole track. I really like that. Um, yeah, let's dive into the kick first. So, um, as I said, I have an Ableton template that I always use as a starting point. And um, in my template, what I've built is <clears throat> uh, I've made a sample sort of drum rack with some of my uh, favorite kicks that I've collected throughout the years. Some of these are sampled uh, from tracks that I really like and and played a lot of uh, played live a lot and and noticed that it always these kicks always kick through, um, cut through for some reason. So I've used those, um, or it could be from sample packs. 
Uh, and what I usually do is then when I have a baseline or uh, a, a uh, when I have the bass line and when I have the, the, the ARP melodies or the melodies, I always combine it with the kick and just go, just check basically which kick uh, fits fits best with the track. So in the end, I went with this kick, but I've, just to show you how I've done this, it's just, I can easily go through other kicks as well by just uh, going down in the in the MIDI section. But I ended up with a, a kick with a fairly short decay because we have um, a fairly long bass line that changes a lot in frequency, in the low frequencies. So I wanted to have short and snappy, but also have some punch and kick through. Um, um, so that's that's why it's uh, a little bit of, mo of a more of a short kick. And you have, let me see. With a little bit of a boost around uh, the 46 hertz. Then I've layered that with another kick, I think is a different one. Yes, it's a different kick uh, because I felt like it could, could use a little bit more of a body, of body around a little bit around 100, 200 hertz. So that's why this one is there. And then one extra for the higher frequencies, which I also, um, I oh, cannot see it in this track actually, but uh, create a little bit of track delay on it, which I can add now. So yeah. Um, no special processing here going on, just uh, three, um, three kick samples combined. Um, I think the key is always to have, you know, good samples then, especially for kicks, there's not, you don't necess necessarily need a lot of processing to those. Um, um, then here are some toms. For some extra groove, which is also in my Ableton template, I've just created, I've just used a uh, 808 tom, and um, I have the standard in my template that I can just play around with it and like that. And in this case, I just uh, went for a more straightforward um, tom groove. Um, to support the bass line and the rest of the groove. Uh, which works, I think, quite nicely with the bass. So it's a little bit of the same groove as the bass line, but also a little bit of difference. Um, no special processing here, just a little bit of a, a fine tuner on, on the shifter to make sure it's in key. And uh, again, some sidechain. Then for the rest of the drums, um, here we go. It's a combination of a lot of different loops, as you can hear. <laughs> Uh, let's start with the snare and the clap. Fairly straightforward clap and the snare. So it's uh, layered. You have this one and you have this one. Um, this is also from my own Ableton template and a lot of the a lot of different samples I've collected throughout the years. Um, oh, 
on a different one. You see. Yeah. So as you can hear here. I went for this one, a fairly short clap, uh, but with a, with a lot of impact. Or not necessarily a lot of impact, but just something that cuts through the mix in a, with a very short decay. Um, it's not a lot of processing on here other than just some um, some panning. Uh, yes. Other than some panning uh, and some some reverb. Um, and let's go through some of the other uh, drum loops here. This is a loop from Basic Waves, just a standard hi-hat. These are the more sort of straightforward ones. This is pretty straightforward as well. So I have some heads and shakers that are more straightforward, forward, and then I have some more uh, uh, Percussion elements that are more groovy. So these are more straightforward. You have not a lot going on here other than just uh, layers of different samples. Uh, this is just, uh, I think, a noise which adds. Yeah, a nice element to the whole groove, which I um, auto panned to the left and the right, give it a little, more little bit more space and uh, make it a little bit more playful. Then we're getting to the more groovy stuff. So let's go through those. You have this one. It's more in the higher frequencies. Also comes in later as a sort of a symbol type uh, element. This is. And here are some more uh, groovy elements. This is more straightforward. Uh, some tambourines. Uh, <laughs> I actually sampled this from uh, a track from uh, uh, from Hell's Load. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I really like those tambourines, so I used it here as well as a sort of a layer. Uh, hope you're okay with that, Thomas. <laughs> um, some rides. Or he rides slash hats. Um, and then the claps. And then altogether, it sounds like uh, this. On this group, I've, uh, I have a little bit of glue compression to to yeah glue it all together basically. And an OT again the OTT um, <coughs> compressor from X4 Records, multiband compressor. Uh, you can also listen to it. 
without it. it makes a lot of difference as you can hear i always like this one because it adds a lot of um um more depth to the the, the high end of the spectrum Not sure why, but when I work on my tracks, I tend to use, um, I tend to mix uh, tracks without a lot of high-end information. So in the around the 10k, then we're always when I compare it to other tracks, it it it, it misses a lot of information on the um, around the 10k margin. So I try to compensate that a little bit with these things, and so uh, a lot of times on the master, I also have a little bit of a boost around 10k hertz. Um, yep, so that's the drums. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we have two noise hats. One is a groovy noise hat uh, made with a simple uh, operator white noise in combination with uh, LFO MIDI which um, gives it a little bit more playfulness uh, and builds tension. And then we also have a more straightforward head that I've uh, um, automated uh, with an automated decay, as you can hear, to build tension a little bit more. Um, and on that is a uh, delay, an auto pan, again, the OTT uh, Realm, which is a really nice uh, um, reverb from Native Instruments. Thanks, uh, Mitch Klein for uh, uh, this tip. I really love this reverb. Um, this gives it a little bit more space. Again, sometimes it's a it's little bit, but in the end, it's the, those little bits that... On a, di on a lot of different channels that make the difference. Um, and the same processing here as well, of course, with an LFO tool, so some side chain. And there's a symbol here. Uh, just a straightforward symbol as well with um, an LFO tool again and some uh, extra gain here and some automated volume which we'll dive into later altogether it sounds like this together with the bass So that's the basic basis of the track. Uh, then we have some other things. Um, we have some more with some pad layers and two other elements that I want to show you now. Um, oh, maybe first it's better to let's delete those first and just dive into the. Uh, counter melody first, yeah. So this track, the the the, the main melody is really the leading, is of course the the leading melody here. But um, for the rest, I also have a counter melody that comes in uh, at the, in the first break, in the main break, and at the end as well, which uh, sound like this.
And for this, I've used um, uh, a pad I called uh, <laughs> I I made myself uh, with the use of one of the presets from Basic Waves, and then uh, adjust a little bit and call it Pad Olander because I felt like uh, it had a little bit of that uh, Jeremy Olander vibe. Um, with some automated glide um, at the end here. Um, again, Realm as a reverb, also automated, which, uh, let me see, goes up here. Because it builds towards this point. Yeah, and of course LFO tool again, and this is just a layer uh, of an octave lower. The same sound, but then an octave lower. And this melody repeats itself, like I said in the break and at the end as well. Then, um we have the asset plug, which is uh, a plug um, that is there to support the melody um, at points where I don't want to go full out with the, the main melody yet uh, and fills up the spectrum. So in the beginning and also later in the song, it's this sound. Which is the diva, also one of the sounds I use, BWA lead Chiron. Um, yeah, acid type sounds I really love, um, with, with some round, again, reverb. Uh, some automated uh, filters going on here and an L and the uh, LFO tool again and it changes also here from being this melody to being one octave higher in the in the break which is not it, it doesn't really uh, reveal itself that much but it just supports the rest Um, yeah, and then we have uh, vocal baby. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's a vocal sound I think created with yes, exhale. It sounds like this. And it creates a little bit of a sort of a question and answer uh, dynamic together with the acid plug. So yeah. In the song, it sounds like this. Oh. <laughs> Um, and then it repeats itself and there's uh, at almost the end of the song a little bit of variation Nice little uh, add-on there for the track. Um, and then we have two things left. We have uh, some pads. 
as a to layer everything up these are quite some channels i believe so let me see okay That, so there's a lot of different pads going on here. Um, All together it sounds like this. And it all supports the main melody and the bass. Without it it sounds like this. So it gives a lot of depth to the song. By far the most important one is this one. And that is... I'm not even sure how I got the sample, so let's find out. Hmm. It's probably a sample from some kind of vocal I sampled, but just unrecognizable. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this was a, a vocal I got for a different project. Uh, just a completely different uh, project I was working on. And um, I was playing around with it and came up with basically uh, this part of it. As a loop, just a really small part of it. And it, it's it's a it's a nice sort of uh, it fills the canvas a little bit more together with uh, the melodies and and all of the other elements without it it sounds like this so it, it fills the spectrum nicely um, and then it automates throughout the track helps build tension as well to certain points. Um, for this I've used a little Alter Boy to, um, <clears throat> to pitch it a little bit, use some drive uh, to make it a little bit more dirty, Realm again as a reverb and an LFO tool. Um, And then there are uh, a couple of layers here. This is just to support the melody. I think this is just a simple mess of sounds, analog dreams. Uh, it's probably a preset I've uh, discovered in, in Massive that I liked. And I found that it supported the, the rest of the melody quite nicely. <laughs> with some automation oh no there's no anima oh, it's automation on the auto filler here and it opens up a little bit more here and here and goes down here there's um uh, a replica the replica um delay from native instrument is on here again the ott and the rc20 as well uh so let's i can show you how it sounds without those to see what differences makes yeah so it makes it a little bit more uh, present in the high, uh, freq higher frequencies give it a little more stereo depth uh, stereo spacing um, and some volume boost And this is basically the same, but then one octave, octave higher. Uh, 
You can barely hear it in the whole track, but in the end, all those little layers, they do make a difference. Um, and here's another layer. That comes in on the last part before the outro starts. Sort of a counter melody to the to uh, where is it the the original counter melody. Um, also a sound from Massive. Um, with again the replica, the OTT RC20 and LFO tool. And then some more straightforward strings or exhales. They sound a little bit, little bit as strings, which are panned hard left, hard right. But they're there just to fill up the stereo, the yeah, the stereo field as well, but also the just the the, the, the spectrum and build tension and add more energy to certain parts. Uh, and it's automated as well. Also, really small layer, but in the end, all those small layers, like I said, make a difference. Um, and then there's two other layers here. Vocal scream. This is probably also from some kind of uh, vocal I sampled and just a, a loop of it with again some reverb uh, here's Raum and little altar boy uh, pitched down without it it sounds like this uh, together with the plugins it sounds like this and it just adds another layer of uh, energy this is the same, but then pitched differently, which already goes in here in the break with automated uh, uh, with the automated filter. Builds up here and goes in here. So altogether, it sounds like. sound like they don't make a difference but if you combine them all together and listen to everything together it does make a lot of difference so yeah those are the pads and then the last thing what we should add are the effects Including snare drums, um, reverbed claps, swooshes as I call them, <laughs> risers, builders, that kind of stuff. Um, so let's first start with the snare drum. Turn those off for a second. So every like eight bars or 16 bars, I have these uh, snare drums from uh, 909, but then um, spaced out a lot using uh, Realm again as reverb, but uh, uh, and using the Replica XT uh, with uh, basically the Haas trick, Haas stereo maker. And in the mix, it sounds like this. You get the idea, just to act for extra tension and uh, building. Uh, 
uh, then there is a clap with a lot of reverb on it, which mainly presents itself here at the climax. Uh, we'll get to that later, but this is how it sounds like. And um, a groovy clap just to uh, for e for extra um, for extra groove at certain points. A layer of the snare drum, a little bit of variation. Let me see. Then we have this riser bar. I think also a sample from one of the packs from Basic Waves. I cut out a lot of the, the mid and lower frequencies. I just wanted to mainly use the higher frequencies and which I think adds a lot of tension here. And then I've reversed it basically at the climax for more of a drop down and I've done the same here and here as well. And here is a symbol. It's a reverse symbol. Reverse that again and uh, but, uh, and just to have a little bit of more of a tail because otherwise it just ends up quite dry. That can also work in some cases, but in this case I found it really nice to have. Works quite nicely for, uh, for certain transitions. And then the last but definitely not least is a white noise used multiple times in the track, which is just a simple uh, operator um, white noise using again OTT the replica uh, some delay uh, and some some gain staging here and um, or some volume automation and an LFO tool for uh, side chaining. And altogether, it sounds like this, for example. Okay, we've gone through all of the parts. Now let's listen to the full track.
All right, that's it. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you have any uh, other questions about this project or any other uh, questions about how I approach uh, music and producing, always feel free to send me a message via Instagram, instagram.com slash uh, or all the other socials. Um, Thanks for watching and uh, take care.